something else I wanted to talk about was uh, I just really wasn't clear in something I was describing in another video. And it had to do with Noah and his sons coming down. That's right. <clears throat> yeah, coming down off the ark in chapter 9. They, that and um, you wanted to kind of describe the name of Canaan or the significance of Canaan and stuff. Yeah. Right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right. right. So since we talked about priestly editing of the text, then there's another phenomena that you've come across. And it's real easy to prove this one in Genesis 14. It talks about how Abraham pursued Lot, the Lot's captors, even as far as Dan. Okay. And that's not the name that the city would have had at that time. That's a much later name. That's a name based on the tribe of Dan, who was Joseph's son. And, uh, so, but what you have there is originally in Genesis 14, it would have read Laish. That's the name of that city, Laish. Hmm. But, but somewhere along the line, the priests updated that reading and they called it Dan so that their, so that their readers would know where it was. That's basically what's going on. All right. Huh, okay. The same thing happens in the book of Exodus with the city of Ramses. That's an update. That's not the original name of the city. That's hmm. not the original name Moses would have written. And like in, so, so you have examples of this. And uh, I'm going to get into a real interesting example, but that's for a future video once people really understand what's going on. Um, but so priestly updating happens as well in the text. And um, priestly updating or just slight revisions to give insight. And one of those actually happens in... in uh, Genesis chapter 9. It starts off with uh, Noah and his sons coming down off the ark. And, uh, and God blessed Noah and his sons and said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. Now, you'll notice he's giving a command here similar to that in Genesis 1. And God blessed Noah and his sons, and said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth. And the fear of you, and the dread of you, shall be upon every beast of the earth, and upon every fowl of the air, upon all that moveth upon the earth, and upon all the fishes of the sea. Into your hand are they delivered. Every moving thing that liveth shall be meat for you. Even as the green herb have I given you all things. But flesh with the life thereof, which is the blood thereof, shall ye not eat. And surely your blood of your lives will I require. At the hand of every beast will I require it, and at the hand of man. At the hand of every man's brother will I require the life of man. Whoso sheddeth man's blood, by man shall his blood be shed. For in the image of God made he man. And you... Be ye fruitful and multiply. Bring forth abundantly in the earth and multiply therein. In verses 5 and 6 then, these are commands he's giving to Noah and his sons now coming off the ark. He says, And surely your blood of your lives will I require. At the hand of every beast will I require it. And at the hand of man and at the hand of every man's brother will I require the life of man. So here he's telling them what's good. And then in verse 6, Whoso sheddeth man's blood, by man shall his blood be shed. For in the image of God made he man. And you, be ye fruitful and multiply, 
bring forth abundantly in the earth and multiply therein. In this section right here, the Edenic clan, although, although they survived the flood and are now come down off the ark into Eden, um, God is assigning them the regal commission that he assigned mankind originally in chapter 1. So they have now lost their sacerdotal commission. They're no longer seen as a priestly people in God's eyes. Do you see that? I do see that. I actually thought that was kind of interesting because I saw when you read verse 6, for God made in his own image, that's referring back to the original mankind that was not part of the Edenic clan. And I'm like, well, at first, my first thought was like, oh, maybe, uh, I don't know, maybe chapters one, chapter two was a recap of chapter one just to kind of play devil's advocate. But I do see that. Yeah. So it's not that. <laughs> it's they actually are as like this other mankind. They've lost their ability to restore Eden. Yeah, right. They have lost the ability to restore Eden. And wow. the, fl the flood actually destroyed the garden, too. See, Makes up, sense. up until that po point, the garden still existed, you know? And there mm -hmm. were cherubim outside to keep the way. And uh, so the garden's destroyed in the flood, and the Edenic people lose their sacerdotal commission and they are they are given a regal commission so that's something important to understand and then here in verse 7 and you be ye fruitful and multiply bring forth abundantly in the earth and multiply therein this is in eden again this is the eretz Mm -hmm. Just the Eretz with no qualifier. No Eretz Shinar here. No Eretz Nod. No Eretz Ethiopia or Eretz Kush or anything. It's just the Eretz. So this is Eden. So this is the primarily how when Ham took his descendants and they left Eden and went to Eretz Shinar and attempted to establish the Axis Mundi. That's why it's such a sin. They are not, and when they say, let us make us a name that we shall, that we shouldn't be scattered in the, in the earth, the Eretz, in <clears throat> Eden, they don't want this verse seven. They don't want this. They don't want to be in the land like this. Hmm. And it's because of the curse of Noah. If they're in the land, they'll be servants to the other Edenic people there. You see how they don't want that? I think so. I, I think so. Hmm. I'll, I'll keep going here and we'll get into that because that comes up next. <laughs> 